Yes. Hello. Uh, I will talk about uh, SQL Server Query Store, uh, and uh, mainly I will use 2016 for the examples, and but I will talk a little bit about what's new in 2017 also. And I'm Jonathan Jonsson, I'm from Desarno, and uh, I have been working with SQL Server since 2005. I've tried a few different versions. Uh, I will start to talk a little bit about uh, how I started to use the query store. I will uh, get into the theory above, behind the query store. What is it and uh, how can you view it in Management Studio? And then I will demo it a little bit. And then I will talk a little bit about, about if you can query it also, not just looking at it in the report. And uh, demo that too. Summer of Query Store and some words on 2017. So what's new and uh, how do you use that? So, first, uh, Query Store, we upgraded to SQL Server uh, in May 2017. And when we did that, we did get some random performance issues uh, that we had in May and June. And uh, when we looked at them, they disappeared. But then they reappeared when we didn't look. So, then we read on the about the query store and then enabled it in July uh, to see if we could find the problems in the query store. And uh, yeah, that was pretty easy. Uh, two days later, we have solved the problems, and after that, we never seen them again. So it can be a real uh, yeah save error, but um, you have to use it right. The problem we had were. Two queries that got bad plans sometimes when the parameters were uh, very different from what they used to be. And then that plans were, ca were cached and uh, stayed in the cache for some while. But when we started to look at them, the plans got recompiled because we tried to query uh, in the management studio and then yeah, new plans were cached instead and everything worked good. So the what they did was did an index scan for 700 million rows. Uh, that's not a fast, fast query. Uh, the table only had 7 million rows, so it read the table over and over again. And uh, yeah, we solved it by forcing plans that didn't do an index scan. And it, it yeah, did index seek and read like 20 rows instead. That's what it needed. Uh, Uh, yeah, and after that, we when we knew what queries were bad, we could optimize the queries when we had the time to do it. We didn't need to do it right away. We could just force a plan, and the problem was solved. So that's how I. Uh, and yeah, after that, we are using Query Store to monitor and solve the performance issues that we have after that, but none are as bad as these. And the, we have looked a little bit on the problems, and they were, yeah, in 2014 that we were used before 2016, we didn't see them. So it's something in the query optimizer that makes it take another path on the, that two queries. Yeah, so what is Query Store then? It's a way to get insight into query plans regarding the choices they make and what plans they are using, if they use more than one plan and why they're using different plans. And it's also performance per query and per query plan. So you can see the different performance for the different query plans that it uses. And the data for the query store is stored in the database. So it is persisted. And uh, it's available even after the problem is solved, if you want to. You can yeah, try and do something, solve the problem, and you can go back into history and see, oh, yeah, what query plan did we have before the problem was solved? And see if we think it will come back. Uh, the downside is it uses disk space in a database. Uh, it must be stored in the primary database, so you can't have it on another disk or something. But it's yeah, a little bit 
data. It's not so big. And it's not on by default. You need to enable it either by alt database or you can do it in the properties in the object explorer. And so the red part here is the uh, standard query optimizer. It uh, yeah, gets a query, checks the plan, either uses a plan, cache from the plan or compiles a new query and then check if you need to recompile it again and executes the query. Uh, the new part with the query store is first yeah, the query store where the data is stored and then in the compile part it looks do you have a forced plan for this query? Then it uses that instead of trying to compile a new query plan. Uh, then it uh, sends the uh, text and the plan it uh, did use to the query store, so it can save statistics on it. And if it uses the cache, then it skips the new compile. Then in the recompile step, it checks, yeah, have you forced a plan that we should use for this query? And uh, when it uh, has finished the execution, it will send the execution stats, so you can look at them. And, uh, yeah. uh, when you enable it, you have a few settings that you should look at. Uh, the first are yeah, operation mode, where off means it's not enabled. When you have read-write, then it updates the query store, and it reads from the query store. Then you can have read mode, then it doesn't write anything new, you, just, you can just look at the data you have. And that's the, if the size limit is, limit is reached, then it uh, automatically goes to read mode if it can't uh, clean out any data. So that's why you have the operation mode actual, that can be read mode if you fill your query store too fast. And you have flush interval, that's how often the query store will write from memory to disk. That's the time you can lose if you restart your server. You know, yeah, if it crashes and restarts. So, and next, next is statistics collection interval. Uh, that's the resolution of the data you will get. So when you're looking at the data, it will save it in yeah, yeah, 50 minute chunks. Uh, and that's to save the disk space, not save every execution, so it aggregates the data. And then you have the max size uh, you can set. We have 5 gigabyte for a 7 terabyte big database, so it's yeah, 0.1%, not that big, but uh, we have a pretty big database too. Uh, you can change capture mode. That's It can capture all queries, but then it capture even the queries you Right in management studio, if you try something out and you get many queries with just one execution. So if you select auto, it will try to capture the queries that are either, either really uh, slow in performance or queried often. So I recommend that settings because otherwise you get so many queries that uh, you can't do anything with you. You run it once, but you saw the statistics then if you wanted to. Uh, and you can have none in capture mode also, then it doesn't capture any new queries, just update the statistics on the old ones. And you can specify that it should auto clean the query store, uh, so you don't fill the space, and you can say how long stale queries will stay. In the, and the stale queries are default for 30 days, but uh, yeah, we we fill the 5 gigabytes in about 2 days, so we have yeah, one day of that. And uh, as I said, the query store stores everything in memory first, and then the new plans are right back, uh, still async, but uh, directly. And the runtime statistics are the ones that are right back on the flush interval. So you, that's the, the it's the statistics you lose if you restart the server. And when you enable the query store, you get a yeah you get the new uh, 
part in the Object Explorer even without enabling that you can't use it. So it's you get six reports where it can look at where it aggregates the statistics uh, and they are regressed queries. That's uh, queries that yeah, used to be good and uh, right now are performing worse. Uh, you can see overall resource consumption on your database. That's just the aggregation of all the data. Top resource consuming queries. That's what queries did use the most resources during that time period you're looking at. And you can see what queries you have forced a plan on. And you can see queries with high variation. That's queries that go up and down, and regression is when it just goes up and stays there. That's different between those two. And uh, you can also go in and track just one query. If you know the query ID, you can go and look on that query. And uh, yeah, they are each different use of the same data that is stored in the query store. So, um, an example of one of the reports, the regressed queries, you get a graph where you can see uh, here top 25 is standard queries. You can see how much there is additional duration. That's how much, much worse they are now than before. So you can see what queries are performing worse now. And then you get to uh, see that, yeah, those queries have just many query plans here. Uh, and you can see when it used them and how they performed. So you can see if yeah, the the yellow one seems good here, and there were some bad dots, but some good. Um, yeah, you can analyze that and try to make a good guess if you should force one plan or what you should do. And then you can press on them and see the query plans for them. And all reports are basically the same, but they are different yeah, yes, add things you can make and see different statistics in the graphs. So they have, yeah, you can change the time span resolution of every graph too, so you can see yeah, I want to check in that hour or the whole day and the resolution, you can't elect a, a smaller resolution than you had in the settings for the aggregation there. If you have one hour there, you can't look at 15 minutes part because it's aggregated in one hour chunks. But you can change it. And yeah, give the data in different ways. And you can see the different query plans. And you can also force a plan. Yeah, I mention force a plan often. I will go into what that is later. And let's look at the graphs in the management studio. See action this yeah. then you have them here you have the graphs you can start at looking at overall resource consumption and uh, this is from a staging environment where we don't uh, are, we are we aren't so active but we have many batch jobs that are running that's because that's why it's so yeah for example, this here is just some batch jobs, and there we have many batch jobs. But uh, so produ in production, it's uh, a bit more smooth graph. But uh, you can see here, yeah, here we have a high duration. Then you can press it, and then it shows the top resource-consuming queries for that time period instead. And uh, yeah, it takes a little while to load the graphs, but uh, uh, they are mostly worth waiting for. Uh, and this graph, we see it's for one hour, and uh, yeah, this is two executions, <laughs> uh, but it's really slow, this query. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, maybe we should do something about that. Uh, but we can look at the third one instead, uh, because both the two top ones are just one query that are running for a long time and uh, don't get the result. Uh, this is some more executions. And, uh, you can, often you are interested in looking at queries with more query plans because that when you can use force plan, that's the big part of this query store. Then you can select, I even want to see them. 
if they have more than two plants. Then you get the funny graphs to look at. So you can see, and you can, if you want to, you can compare them. You can select them and choose to compare the query plans. And uh, maybe you need a, yeah. yeah. So that, when you're comparing query plans, you need a big screen. <laughs> it's, yeah, everything is, has changed. It says, but you can do it if you, sometimes you see, yeah, it's just one part of it has changed. Uh, and you can look at craft queries. Well, craft a query that has an interesting <laughs> statistics. You see, it uses two different query plans all the times. And you can see the one, that one is, uh, has an average of 200 milliseconds and that has an average of 13 milliseconds. And then you can see, yeah, I think I want to try to use this plan all the time instead because its performance is much better. And then you can choose to force the plan. And then it will, we can do that. And uh, now it will try to use that plan for that query. So you see it has shape boxes here. It uses the forced plan. So if we continue to execute the query, hopefully it will use the yellow plan instead. So, then forcing a plan, uh, what does that mean? Yeah, it's just uh, sometimes SQL Server get many query plans, yeah, mostly because of different parameters, but also changing statistics or some other unknown reason that the uh, uh, optimizer thinks it can do better now than it did before. And uh, when you force it, you order SQL Server to try to use that plan for that query, it will still uh, make some uh, assumption and think, yeah, now I don't want to use that force plan, uh, and you don't really get to know why, but uh, mostly it will use the force plan. Uh, so it, you can't order it to always use it, but it will try to use it. But it comes with a warning. The, if you force a plan, it will be used even if a better plan is available. You won't try to compile a better plan. So if you Force a plan and then in search, uh, creates a new index that will speed up that query. It will not use it. So forcing a plan is yeah, often good, but uh, you need to check in what plans you have forced to see if they are still reasonable to have forced. So when do you typically force them? Yeah. Uh, regression is the main part. That's why this is introduced. It's when it uh, yeah, did go fast and something happened and it compiled a new query that uh, made it perform worse and yeah. Then you can force it. Or if you have very changing statistics, if you insert much data, then the statistics will get yeah, out of date and then can, it can take a bad plan until it has updated the statistics. Then you can force it and it will use the good plan even when you insert much data. And basically it is when you feel you know better than SQL Server. And uh, we all want to have that feeling, don't we? <laughs> and um, yeah, so it's another way of telling SQL Server to do than query hints. Query hints are, they live with the query. So if you change the query, the query hints will still stay in the query. But if you change a query when you have forced a plan, it will not use that forced plan because if you force the plan to the query. So if you select one more column, you will lose that forcing of the plan because it's a new query and then, so it has a, it, 
can be used in different scenarios from query hints that uh, are easier to overlook because you have the you have one report where you can see all your forced plans. Query hints are hidden inside the queries and you need to know where you have them. Uh, and yeah, it's not a permanent solution, uh, but it, I think it's a very good way to fix a performance problem you have now and then look into it later instead of trying to solve the query now. You can just, yeah, that plan is good now, we are forcing it and then later on you can look in the plan and see why did it take that wrong path and see what you can do. Uh, and yes, um, the reports that we looked there, they were pretty fast here, but uh, when we are running them in our production server that I wanted to demo in, it takes one to two minutes to load the reports. So they, it's not so useful. Then, but the table are stored in, uh, the data are stored in tables, so you can query it. Uh, and yeah, the main reason the reports are slow. But also, you can, in the query, you can select to eliminate, yeah. I w don't know what to do about that query, and I won't, don't want to have it in the statistics. And mainly in the reports, you get the same queries all the time, but that's maybe not the ones you can do anything about. They are used often, they are pretty slow, but you don't really need know what to do because they are reading much data. And then, if you query them, you can get yeah, the, you can do what you want with the data. So I show you how you can query them. Uh, I mainly look at two tables. They are more involved in the query store, but you have one that is query store runtime stats. Yeah. Uh, and that is the aggregated runtime stats. That where you have one row for every 15 minutes for every query, if it has an execution during that period. And then you have the query store plan where every plan and uh, every query and all the plans are stored. So I like this query. Yeah, query ID not in. Then I have those queries I know, yeah, they are pretty slow, but I don't know what to do with them. And then I can say, what's the next in the so then you can query it and you can get the query plan and you can get statistics, see? And there, I think there are two things you can find when you're looking at queries. One are this, uh, if you're really lucky, you see that you are missing an index. Uh, so that's good even if you just get one query, you can sometimes get a SQL server to tell you what to do. Uh, but most part you are looking for uh, we remove that query so we didn't get it next time where you get two plans uh, you can view them if you want they're big and uh, often when uh, we, you view them, view them and you have you look at the duration you see, you, that one is four times slower than that other, then you can hopefully see a reason for it and see, yeah, in that query it takes that path and did a, do a scan there and that's because you have a left out beyond that you don't need or when you have that parameter, then, so, but you can also just see, and you see both our plans are actually used quite often. So you can force a plan even from here if you want, it's just a store procedure. We want to force, let's say we want to force the fast plan, the lower one, for the query. And I just selecting, let's say, I think force for this query, force this plan. And you run it. So you don't need to press the force button in the reports to force them, you can do it from TS2. And now this is forced plan. Once no, now it will use that, and then you can. Yeah, I'm finished with that query. If you force it in the 
report, it will still show up as one of the expensive now because it hasn't started to use the good query plan. So yeah, it's tomorrow you can see here that is has changed. So that's the main reason for querying the store, I think. And another is performance. Here you don't need to load all the 25s and all the data. You just look at what you need. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, the database contains a few terabytes of data, and the query store are set to five gigabytes. And the query store I looked at now are five hundred megabytes. And that's why it answers fast. So I, I, it hasn't gone any better in two thousand seventeen. There are still pretty slow performance in the query store, and I haven't yet seen a query store query in the query store, because it's slow, because I, they don't run too often. But uh, if you use it enough, maybe it will show up. Uh, um, yeah. So, query store in 2016, is, you can view them in graphs, um, in the reports, or you can view them by TSQL. You can gain, gain insight on how the query plans are used, the performance for different plans, and you can force pl plans, for example, in regression of queries. And one thing we were a little worried about before enabling it was the performance impact of the query store. It uh, does save a lot of data. Uh, and we didn't really see any performance impact when we turned it on, but uh, it could be that we found so many queries that we could optimize. That, uh, yeah. Because actually the performance of the database went up when we enabled query store. Uh, but I think it was because we have some bad performing queries. But uh, around three to five percent performance impact uh, is what uh, other are reporting. But uh, that depends on how big your database are, how big your queries are. The more queries and the smaller resolution you have of the data, the more performance impact you get. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, and you can set it to read mode and then it will be enabled. You can read it, then you can set it to uh, not catch new queries, only catch statistics on the old. And so if you want to limit the performance impact. Uh, yes. And 2017 then, what's new? Yeah. Uh, the first part is the weight queries. You can get statistics on what our queries are waiting for. Uh, for the same yeah, new tables, but uh, they are also persisted. You can view it when you want. You don't need to look at the query now. And they are stored for every query and every plan, like the other statistics. So that can be useful if you have queries that perform slow, maybe it's just waiting time, not the actual performance that are slow. And then you can see them, you can see other queries that are waiting for the same tables, and you can try to find out where they're waiting for. So that's good. But the part I think is even funnier is automatic plan correction. Then SQL Server will help you and out of force plans when they think now the query optimizer had did a bad job and selected the worst plan, then it will out of force the old plan. Well, I will try to... Yeah. It, you get a new view you can query to see the recommendations it has. First, you, you get two parts. First, it says those are the recommendations, and then you can turn it on and say, yeah, use the recommendations if they get a high enough score. Uh, Trying to look at this, uh, we hope the demo guys are with us. Uh, demo regression ain't the easiest part to do. Um, because it's often not there when you want it to. So here we have a uh, 2017 database instead. Uh, we 
turn off the query store and turn it on to clear everything. And we <laughs> clear our procedure cache is. And now we set auto tuning to force last good plan off. So you can look at what this does and don't just, otherwise it will automatically force the plan and we can see what it's doing with the queries. So we have a simple database, the, yeah, the new example database, the wild word borders, uh, where we have many items with package type ID 7. They are, it's the most used type. So we start by selecting that a few hundred times to uh, get some statistics so, it be, so we can get the regression. Look at the query plan to run. Uh, see, now it does uh, a column store index scan to get all the rows. Uh, and then we want to force the regression. We clear the procedure cache. Uh, to, uh, otherwise, it will be too intelligent to get the regression. And we try to query with package type ID 0, where we have one item. <laughs> so now it will still get the scan. OK. <laughs> now it shouldn't be the scan. It should be a seek. <laughs> We're hoping that it, we will get the version. Uh, anyway, let's try this. And then we run 7 again. Now the theory is that we get a seek when we only want one item and we want seven, then the column store index scan are better and then we get the regression. But now I don't think we will get the recommendation. We'll try it one more time because I think I can't have the execution plan enabled and it won't work. Uh, so the, the theory for this regression to happen is you want to have a scan and you are filling the query store with the queries that does the scan, and then you're fooling it to use a seek instead by clearing the procedure cache, and this query wants a seek because you just want one item. And when you are querying it for the, uh, the other ones, you should. Yeah, now we got it. Uh, maybe it was the show execution plan. Uh, and here you can see, here it says, I think uh, this query uh, has gone from 1.65 milliseconds, that was before we cleared the procedure cache and run it 300 times, to 43.66 milliseconds. And then it has a score of 92. If it's above 10, then it will auto force plans if you have that enabled. This is a pretty high score. Uh, and then it says, yeah, force query 1 to use plan 1, and then you will get back to 1.65 milliseconds runtime again. You can get a little more information if you want uh, for this. But, uh, it just it says how much gain we have and what queries. See, we have query 1, the new the new plan it changed to was 3, so we did get a plan 2 sometimes when we did the first try. And the recommended plan is plan 1. So. And uh, if you change it to auto force plan on instead, then it would have changed the plan automatically when you run this. Uh, so then you don't want, need to do anything. Just uh, set it on and let it run and it solve the problems for you. It's the theory. <laughs> then uh, I don't know how it works. We, I haven't tried it on a... 2017 database in production just in testing environments. So I don't know how good it will perform. And the query store are the same. Uh, same reports you get in 2017. Uh, yeah, those. Uh, and you can look at uh, the new part here. You can change, yeah, what you want to look for is duration, CPU, and memory. Uh, yeah, this reads and memory consumption. Uh, and the new thing here is wait time. Then you can look at how the wait times are regress, regressing. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> worst thing. And uh, hopefully you can understand why it's waiting more now than it did before. Uh, and uh, you can change, look at the history you want to compare with when you're looking for regression. So it's the same reports, just a new selection of wait time. Uh, and if you look at the uh, database, we have the query store wait stats. It's a new table. Uh, and then otherwise it's the uh, same tables we looked at before, the plan, query. We can get the query text from the query store too. We don't want, need to have it from the plan cache. And you can see, yeah. Ah, wrong date. Query. Yeah, it has changed. We're looking at query one that are waiting 30 milliseconds on something. You can see, What's it waiting for? It's mainly for memory, but sometimes for CPU time too. So, and I should demo one more thing in the 2016 database. If we look at, let's see if we can demo that. But we, mm, I should have opened that before. Uh, looking at the queries with the forced plan is uh, uh, so probably the most expensive report that I found. Uh, it can take some minutes to open, so I should have opened it when I demoed it. And, uh, <laughs> so you can look at, you can take this. Uh, you can also, if you want, don't like the graphs, you can view the data in grid format instead, so you can see it even here in grid format when you, and then you can see and sort on data. And yeah, the, you get the query SQL object name here if, is, if you run a store procedure, it will save the store procedure name. So you can see, so if you have many store procedures, then yeah. here we have uh, some Nice uh, store procedures that are running that are from last year's Svetog presentation. <laughs> That's to optim update stats and reorganize them. Yeah, our most expensive queries. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, if you can, uh, uh, the one part I wanted to show here is it keep tracks of the forced plans you have and if they failed to be used in the query optimizer and the reason for why it's not using it. So maybe it's because the statistics have changed, it can, the index is dropped that you have forced it to use, or so you can see that statistics and uh, because you force plans and you have forced plans and then it will try to use it. But if something in database says, oh, this is not a valid plan anymore, then it will compile a new. And that is, I have not really seen, but I read that, uh, that, uh, affects performance badly because then it will try to use it and recompile the query every time instead of using the plan cache because it should use it and oh it can't and then it compiles the query instead of using the queries in the cache. So that's a good part to look at and if you force plans to see have you forced any plans that are not used anymore. Uh, and that can if you change the query then it will not use the force plan, then it will just uh, yeah, be one in the database that are saved. But if you actually change the plan, yeah, here we have force plan failure count. You see, we have some queries with force plans that are not used. And you can see when it compiles and yeah, pretty old queries that are still not using the force plans. And you get some description of why. I don't really know what they mean. But 
this is good to look at and see. Maybe you should unforce the plans that are getting high failure counts because they are not doing anything good, just slowing down the database. And we, yeah, we can see that we have uh, used this uh, forced plans quite a bit. We have uh, 64 forced queries uh, in the database, and we are trying to look at them, yeah, mainly the ones that are failing, but otherwise looking at them now and then to see, um, can we unforce this plan? Because we, it's, uh, yeah, it, we are using inserting new indexes and maybe we are not using them, so it's good to keep this list on a reasonable amount. Uh, but this is our staging environment, so it's smaller in the production where we look at them and unforce them. Here we sometimes forget to unforce them in the staging environment. Yeah, and. Uh, the demo gods were with us, and we got that recommendation. Uh, exactly the same score as last time I ran it, but uh, different query times. And yes, that's all. Any questions? Yeah? Yes? Yes? Uh, the queries are not so good to look at because they are really big often, but you get them in the query store and uh, if you get them, you get them parameterized in the entry framework and then you get many queries for the same and then you can see how they perform. A uh, few of the forced plans are from query, from entry framework. If they're forced. So that was, yeah, one of the two queries we have and that was the problem was the entry framework really generated query. Where we have written bad codes, so it did a left out join instead of an inner join that was expected. So we didn't find out that bef before we looked in the query store and so that it changes so much. It's 